Okay, welcome to ETN News. We're looking at the hot spots first. Some kind of explosion or something, or a hot spot popped up. These will pop up in one image when it's a hot spot. And that's only one image. Not unless the cloud covered the next part where it's an explosion, so we don't know for sure. This is on the east part of Idaho. This is Yellowstone up here. Wyoming, Idaho, Montana. Okay, let's go look at the next image. Alright, this one here is south from Vancouver Island. That's a big area too, and we got one little small one right behind that. Okay, now this one is Hawaii Island, and do you see how bright that is? See if we can get a closer look on that. All right, now you see how hot that is right in the middle of it. That is really hot. Now that's either a earthquake or something going on in the ocean out from Hawaii. But usually it's an earthquake. Earthquakes come through. The, it'll shift, and when the earthquake shifts like that, as it goes through, rocks collide together and you know millions of tons of rock and friction will show up and it'll show there's an earthquake on the move or it's magma coming toward the surface okay now we're going to take a look at the earthquakes now all of these here this one here is a 2.2 south of the volcano of Hawaii that's south of Kilauea and that one is 1.4 miles deep, right on the slump, right in the crack. And we got these two up here. They're not in the caldera, I mean, in the chambers. The chambers, all of these here are in the chambers, except for these coming up in a line, starting right here. These here is in the chambers, and these two. But this line right here is like two miles closer toward the surface. They're small quakes, 1.8 1.8, and they're all about the same, 2.0. That's 18.5 miles deep, 18.3, 18.5, 18 18.5. So these here is a weak spot, and this is right on the, a little bit north of northeast of Pahala. There's the town or the city. Gotta watch that. That's a weak spot now. It, or it wouldn't be showing that. Gotta look at all the signs. It shows us the signs. All we gotta do is look for them. Alright, Alaska. What kind of swarm we got going on there. Avanoff Bay. Swarming. And Unalaska Island, got a small swarm. Got to watch when they're swarming like that. And a 3.8 Hughes, Alaska, southwest from there, 12.7 miles deep. And out here at the beginning of the Cascadia, a 4.3. West of Port McNeil, Canada, 6.2 miles deep. Small swarm at Mount Rainier. Uh, Yellowstone. We'll go look at these here and those those here in a minute. And got a swarm around Bodie too. I haven't seen a lot of activity there in a while, but I don't think there's no two point fives or greater. And it's starting to pile up around Beatty. There's four small ones: Indian Springs and Beatty, Nevada. We talk about this a lot. Can't do it every time, but we talk about it a lot, and we'll talk about it again. Okay, let's go check out something else. Right here's Mount Rainier, and 0 0.9 was the first quake. 0 0.9 second, then a 2.9, so that was... It's like four shocks. It goes up. When it starts to swarm, it shows that most of the time we're getting a larger quake on 
like that one we just looked at a moment ago. Then we went to a 1.0 and 1.4. All of these are a little over four miles deep. Two are the lower four and two are up in the higher four. Let's see what we got now. Let's go over here to Yellowstone. Well, we got that starting to swarm again. And you can notice it's in the same area. Same area as the other day when we had activity here. Started out as a 0, 0.0, 4.7 miles deep. And then it went up to a, let me see, a 1.6, 4.5 miles deep. So we got six quakes in here, counting this one over here to the side of 0, 0.0. So that's two 0 0.0s, a little over four miles deep. Got to watch everything. Now let's look at Canada and see what we got going on around Canada, what they're reporting. That way we can keep up with what the USGS don't over here on the west coast, northwest. 1.5 eight hours ago. That's all I'm seeing in the east. There's the Yellowstone. There's the 4.7 and 3.5 west of Port Alice, British Columbia. Two small ones right before that. So it's hit a weak spot right here on the way down the coast. All right, now I'm going to look at the earthquakes, and we was expecting maybe a couple of sixes or something. Well, we got, around Tonga, we got a 5.7, 6.2 miles deep. And this one up here started out as a 5.7 around Japan, but now they changed it and upgraded it to a 5.9, 6.2 miles deep. So this was... Probably close to a 6, and this one down here may be 2, I don't know. That one there's a 5.4, 5.7. I never caught this when it first popped up. But we're expecting a couple more 6s somewhere. And it should be over here in this region, you know, but it can move on and maybe even see a 7. Not sure right now. 2.9 northeast of Ashford, Washington. That was on the... Volcano, Mount Rainier, 2.7, west-southwest of Mentone, Texas. And up here, let me see, that's a 2.9, and we already got the 4.3 McNeil. And the 2.9 in Hawaii. Okay, just expect a couple of sixes in the next couple of days for sure, because we... We got those coming already. We seen that the other day. They gave us like uh, four days ahead of time. And the east. I know it's cleared out. but You know, this is looking pretty dangerous around the Cascadia also. I mean, it, it don't look good. There's something wrong here, and I can't put my finger on it. Don't know what's going on with that. But we'll figure it out as we go. Now, firms, fire map, NASA. Let's go over here and look at something. Let's see, La Palma. It's the last 24 hours, and La Palma is hot spot. We watch these hot spots and make sure that they don't move. Here's our print of where it's located, right here. You see that print? Well, usually it's closer or up on the upper end. It's moved over. So that hot spot is moving. It'll disappear and it'll come back. And sometimes it'll be two hot spots there in that location. Iceland, that's a working area up there. Up north. Don't know what that one is. Greenland. Got one. And Hawaii is not showing anything. Australia. Let's look at this Australia and stuff because I, I got to go through here and show you something on Australia. Starting to get worried about that place. 
you know, it's always been hot, of course, but nothing like it. It's not this time of the year, and it's just not right. Make sure there's no hot spots on the volcanoes. That one's coming down the volcanic ridge, but it looks like maybe a couple houses or something on fire or something. Has to be big to show up on the satellite. And we got those storms, but you can see the anomalies. Different color. And you got one over here. Let's go look at Australia. I want to show you something here. Australia, the hottest place on earth. And it's in the 90s. And when we get up here, it goes to 115 degrees. Right there, 115 degrees in this black part. So you can see the black part right here is putting out a lot of heat. This part. A lot. And this part here. So what's in this area and this area? Because all the way around the planet... 79, 80s, Papua New Guinea, 70s and 80s, down to 60s in a couple of spots. New Zealand, right beside of it. 72, 79. It don't even hit 80. Drops down into 60s in certain spots. So why Australia so hot? Now here's the hottest part. And then it goes to the 90s and it's not like that around the planet. This is the hottest continent on the planet. I mean look at America. It's up here it's got uh, minus 37. I think I see minus 55 somewhere here in the northern part of Canada. Minus 22. Minus 21 all the way down just about to the border. That is cold. All the way down here. South America, 40s on the coast, next to the coast. It even drops down to 37 down to south end. Up to north end, 55. I mean, these temperatures are rising. But the thing about it is, nowhere around the planet is it 115 degrees. Something going on with Australia. Okay, I'll see you on the next updates. And everybody stay safe. And we'll be watching.